Hello world. <laughs> um, my name is Alma Wiggins. I am a trustee at Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Rockville, Maryland. And I want to give a very warm thank you to Aaron Rice, who has given me the opportunity to be a part of this dynamic program that he's put together on sustainability and all of the other technical aspects of what we have been working on for a very long time. Um, I am excited about this opportunity. And in thinking about it, the first thing I thought about was, it, this all started with a crab cake. Um, Aaron and I have known each other for a very long time, and we're both in the same brokerage. He on the commercial side and moving into really wonderful international things. And um, I'm remaining basically local on the residential side. He helped me in um, a very challenging transaction back in 19, uh, 2022. And um, we were celebrating the closure of that transaction over a crab cake lunch and just having a general conversation. And then he asked me about, um, you know, are you familiar with the um, BEPS program? Which is the benchmarking uh, program for the uh, for the county and for the state of Maryland, and I said, "What is that?" And then he proceeded to, in his usual manner, of providing me with a whole lot of information and the sources where I could go and find out about it. And I said, "Okay, that sounds interesting," and I didn't have a clue. And I said, does this involve, does this include churches? And he said, yeah, I think so. At the time, at the end of uh, 2022, it was questionable as to whether um, religious institutions were going to be a part of that uh, based on uh, the, the, the mandates and the, the laws that were being passed. But at a later time, he informed me, yes, it would be. So my question to him is, was that, um, well, how can that apply to us at Mount Calvary Baptist Church? And that's how the whole thing started. So when you talk about... Uh, 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 building a sustainable future and a crab cake, it, it, it's not necessarily the connection, but that's what it started with. And um, I'm not the technical person, but I'm around, I'm surrounded by a team of, of, of wonderful technical people who are helping me to understand it. So I'm learning and I'm growing. And I am extremely committed to how this is going to benefit Mount Calvary Baptist Church. I've been a member at the church for a long time. I won't go into the numbers. Um, and I've been a trustee since 2012. And one of my passions when I get involved in something is to go full out with it and to be um, committed to the, the purpose, to be committed to the goals. And on the trustee side, we're um, really uh, deeply involved in the, um, the finance aspect of the church, the operations, um, the efficiency of things. And we are, um, an historically black church in Montgomery County celebrating 122 plus years. And we have a structure that is um, interesting, I should say. 
because of the expansion and the uh, different bills over a period of time. So there are challenges when you have three different structures created um, at different times. So you've got different materials, you've got different operating systems, and we are in a fix it when it occurs um, state. And we are also a, a, an integral hub in Rockville and Montgomery County um, being located in central part of, um, of, of, of Rockville. So there are a lot of activities that are going on that are community-based. We have the food service, we have the food distribution, we have um, um, a lot of activities that are outreach to the community. And we also have a, a portion of, this, of the system that is um, of the building that has um, rental space. And I learned about the BEPS program, which is the um, benchmarking program um, that's a mandate in the county as well as for the state. And that is um, benchmarking our energy, um, our energy use, our efficiency use. I'm not real great on all of the acronyms, um, but I know what it's all about. And what we needed to do as a starter um, was to figure out what it is we're spending our money on that we could be using better. And the first phase of this program in buildings that are over 25,000 square feet, and we are above that, and also the state level, which is 35,000 feet in, um, in, in, uh, in space, and we are above that. So we are required by law to meet the county and the state mandates for energy efficiency to cut down on the green gases that are um, produced by commercial buildings. And we've got a timeline in which to work on that, but all of these things take time. And it's important that we meet those deadlines because we don't want to get to the end of the process and figure out that we didn't do our homework and that we have to pay fines for not being in compliance. So my commitment is to work with our church and become a um, sustainable uh, energy user to be efficient and to use the resources that we have to be able to do the work, which is our theme uh, from our new pastor who's with us, has been with us for three years. So um, we need to do these things. And when Aaron introduced me to this whole concept, I have been all in. We have done phase one, which was a 24 month period of clocking or tracking our utilities. And that was mind boggling. Then we went to phase two and that was more involved on the technical aspect and working with the wonderful teams of, of people who have been very supportive and very, very helpful in uh, explaining various things to me as we proceed. So we have accomplished phase one and phase two so that we can work toward our new thing, which is called the Energy Star Rating. These are all new terms. <laughs> but the Energy Star Rating is... Um, what we are working to achieve, which will mean to us that we have a safe building 
and that it is um, going to be a healthy building so that our members, our staff, and then those people who use our building as a public um, uh, arena for their different events are coming into a safe situation. And we have a rather piddly number right now. And it's based on a hundred percentage, a hundred percent of what the expectation is. <laughs> uh, we would fail at this point. I don't like that. So we need to work with all of the teams that are helping us and putting these programs together to increase our efficiency, to increase our um, activities that is, that's going to save us some money, and then we can put that money toward our ministries. A little bit on a more formal side, building for a sustainable future. We are going through this process and we're exploring how to be financially and environmentally responsible. And we can be, as one of the older churches in Montgomery County, we can spearhead that. We can be a beacon to help other churches and other organizations to step out and come on board to do the work that's a part of becoming a um, a healthy a healthy building. Working with Aaron with the uh, the air quality that was very interesting. Um, we had we had monitors put in the building that would uh, really track the air quality, the CO two, and all of those other symbols that I can't remember all the time, but I've, I've learned what they mean, and I'm still, it's still a work in progress. Um, and I remember one time he was in Florida, and he sent me an email saying, what is going on at Mount Calvary? And it happened to have been a, um, a homecoming activity, uh, where we had a lot of people in the building and the numbers were just not good. Um, but with the monitors that were in the building, we were able to identify what's going on in different parts of the building um, when the air quality is not what it's supposed to be. And then that was done for 90 days, I believe. Yes, it was for 90 days. And then... Um, we got a report on that. That tells us what we need to do in order to improve the air quality and improve, um, really establish a, a healthy place for people to, to work and to uh, carry on the activities. My question that I think about this as we go through the different activities is, are we going to be part of the problem or are we going to be part of the solution? I would like very much to be part of that solution and being a part of this program and looking at the, um, the grant opportunities that are going to help us do the work and improve the condition of the building, then that would set, tell me that we can do this with a collective, collaborative effort to do the work that's necessary, to apply for the grants, to clean up our act, to do a better job, to have a safe place for us to, uh, to live and work. Um, the opportunities um, are rather challenging because it involves change. It involves a different mindset. And as a church, 
with our history, we've been around for a very long time. There are traditions, uh, there are practices, there are habits that we've been doing for a very long time. And to do what we have to do involves change. And change is sometimes very challenging. Um, one of the things that I worked with uh, a few members in church is to just share information and to share data, hard data, to show them how how much money we were actually spending and how we could cut that cost. And then we can take those dollars and move them into uh, the ministries and the activities that we want to do. When we are in a, in a house or in our church house, so to speak, and there's a problem with the roof, or there's a problem with the utilities, or there's a problem with something that is critical to the health and safety of the, and, and well-being of the people there. That becomes a priority. But in our church, we want our priority to be um, for the ministries to do the activities that they are involved in. But we, when we have these emergencies, there are must-dos that we have to spend money for. And when you have limited funds that are allocated, and then we spend more money than necessary in our um, uh, in our uh, upkeep of the property, that cuts into the missions that we want to take care of. One of the things that I love whenever I'm, I get involved in something, I work on principle and I work on purpose. And sometimes that gets me into trouble. However, it doesn't stop me because we want to do what is good and right for our members. And that can be challenging sometimes because we have a mindset that has been established and introducing new concept, concepts take time. So anytime we have a, a, a small milestone that we achieve, we celebrate that and we advertise that and we share the benefits of having done a, so that we can do B, C, and D. And as um, <laughs> as a retired educator, I'm, I, I look at different ways of telling people why this is important. And not only telling them, but helping them to understand so that they can buy into the tasks that we need to do. And when I was uh, talking with Aaron and talking with Khalid on, um, on something, um, I was reminded that everything starts with one person. <laughs> and it just so happens that I'm it uh, for this. So I, I fully take on that responsibility and we are growing in understanding we are growing in acceptance for change. We are growing in the effort to get this thing done in a timely manner. And uh, that I'm very happy about so that uh, we can do our work and we can celebrate our wins. And I'm being faithful and I'm being bold and we're pursuing this to get the work done. Um, I think about uh, there's a, a thing called the butterfly effect and that you, you that one little butterfly flapping their wings on one part of the world, when it, that is multiplied, it can create uh, a tycoon 
a typhoon or whatever it is you want to call it, it can create a very big impact in another part of the world. This energy project, I see that as a butterfly effect. Each person doing a little bit in for their job, being um, instrumental in uh, uh, activity or information or support, then we get the job done over time. Because I think of, I'm a grandmother, I think of how my grandchildren are going to live in this world 30, 40 years down the road when I'm no longer here. And I think it is our responsibility of what we are doing today that's going to set the platform for what is going to happen and what kind of country they will be living in. We are responsible for that. I think about 40, 50, 60 years ago, who did the work for us? You know, I I, I look at this phone and um, <laughs> I think about the old big black phones that you had to dial. And by the time I got halfway through, I forgot the last number and I'd have to start over again. But now we can we we are walking and talking with our phones, with our TVs, with all of that, all of that technology, all of those, even down to the automobile. You know, I don't like horses. I don't like to have to ride them or a mule. That's where we were. Where we are now, there are hundreds and thousands of opportunities to enhance the technology so that we can have a better quality of life. And if we don't em 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 embrace that, then when we get to a critical point, it'll be too late. So the work that we do now is important. So again, being faithful, I pray a lot. And then I go to work, and then I work to make it um, come to fruition. It's important that we be good stewards, and we embrace change. It's not always easy, but it is necessary. And there's always continuous learning. And as we work to be good stewards of our resources, then we can expand on the ministries and the missions that we want. And we can have a, a safe and efficient building that we can work, um, that we can work in and work from because our church is, um, the site of many community activities. Uh, we have the National Night Out, which is the protection. Um, with the, with, well, we have the policemen and we have the firemen and then we have a lot of the community-based uh, organizations that come and share that, um, share that experience with us. We had uh, over 400 people in attendance for our last one. And there was food and music and games and fun for everybody. When we have a building and we have grounds that can accommodate that, that's what our community outreach is all about. We have food distribution and we have um, international uh, support for children um, in various parts of the world. That's our mission. That's what we're all about. And we need to have a safe place in which to use as our platform for the outreach that we're, um, um, that we're doing. 
so effectively using our resources, being good stewards, and supporting the causes, and doing the work. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I will continue to do this because I, I love it. And if I'm working on it, I'm all in. And I am in total support of the missions for Mount Calvary, the outreach, the conservation, the preservation, the utilization of, um, of, 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 of energy that's going to be of a benefit to us now and to millions of people in the future. So I just want to conclude by saying, let's commit to doing the work in God's kingdom here on earth with faith and tenacity and a collective effort. We will get the work done and everyone will be in a better place for it. Doing the work, especially doing the work that's been assigned to Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Rockville, Maryland. And I want to thank you for this opportunity. I want to thank my dynamic pastor, Reverend Dr. Brian O'Bellamy for uh, allowing me to participate in this project and to represent the church as a trustee to do the work that we need to do and to spearhead whatever else I can be a part of. Thank you. That was amazing. Alma, thank you so much for participating this year. I do have a, a few very quick questions. We we uh, we are a little short on time, but um, well, shouts out to G and M uh, for their awesome crab cakes. <laughs> 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 uh, don't want to leave them out. Um, and uh, you know, I guess the question I had was, you know, in regards to the you mentioned the indoor air quality. There there are two things, two roles that we played early early on. Uh, one was was creating that that digital twin of the of the church of the interior and exterior of the property um, and that's where we were able to actually do a um, gross square footage verification because I think the public record said the church was right around 32,000 square feet but and then when we correct absolutely when we used the lidar technology um, which which created a schematic floor plan we're actually to able to validate that it was actually 38,000 square feet, you know, and change, which meant that you weren't just subject to the Montgomery County building energy performance standard. You were now in the crosshairs of the statewide uh, building energy performance standard, um, which, which without that verification probably wouldn't have known. And, um, you know, who knows what it would have happened. So that's one thing. And then you mentioned the indoor air quality uh, when I contacted you from Florida, it was actually like 9.30 at night, uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, what on earth? What, what could be going on on a Thursday? Uh, 9.30 at night and the carbon dioxide was just, you know, uh, the numbers were pretty high. So, so that's when I reached out. I was like, oh, what is going on? Come to find out you were having a meeting. I guess there was some planning going on for uh, for an event that you had there at the church. But um you know, being able to monitor the real-time indoor air quality, even though we just did it for 90 days, um, you know, my my focus is really uh, on the health and wellness of the occupants in the building and um, and, and kind of leading with that. And when we take care of all the energy retrofits that, that you know, working with uh, Dr. Kinslow and, and Khalid and the Montgomery County Green Bank, uh, it resolves the air quality issues at the same time. Um, so I think that's great. So, Absolutely. Um, uh, talk to me real quickly about um, maybe um, some of the barriers that you've had to, or maybe one barrier that you've had to overcome uh, to adopt, uh, which for some is a pretty aggressive uh, approach when it comes to, um, you know, retrofitting the church, a, a hundred uh, and ten year old church family at that. Uh, yes. One of the things 
as I mentioned, we are a, tradi a traditional church. And uh, we, we have those basic traditions and that foundation that is important to our culture um, and the, the, the things that we do. However, I look at tradition as the foundation on which to move forward and being able to share this information with, um, with our congregation as saying, this is something that we need to do was not the steps that, um, that I, 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 I had planned to take. It's a matter of making people aware of what the issues are with data. When we did the um, when we did the uh, the uh, energy uh, assessment, looking at the um, the figures of for for what for gas and electricity, yeah, uh, and compare them over time and seeing the seeing the increase because of the uh, utility cost that each year it was increasing by a certain percentage and that it will continue to do that. And each time it's like on a sliding scale, if you have more money going into repairs and renovations, uh, emergency things like the day the lights went out when we were on our way to church, uh, we eventually did get them back on. Uh, and we did have service that day, but that was that was the first time that had never happened before. Or the boiler goes out and we don't have the heat. Or when we have more money that's going to that, it cuts into the expenditures for the year. There's and there's an annual um, allocation that is established. But when, just as in the home, <laughs> and some emergency comes up, you've got to take care of that emergency. So you can't take that vacation or you have to cut back on, um, I love shoes. I have to, um, I can't buy those pair of shoes that I want. Or there's something that has to be cut out, cut out in order to accommodate the emergencies. And in an older building, um, they become more frequent because the the lifespan of those um, of of those pieces of equipment have um, gone beyond you know their effective age. So it's a band aid effect, and um, you can't always plan for that because it's, it 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 would be an emergency. So sharing that with the members and then understanding for them to understand that process and determine that there is a need, being aware, and then accepting that, that there is a need for something, and then being able to provide the information and the process on how we can remedy this is, is extremely critical. So the, the data talks to us. And in collecting the accurate data and keeping records um, that are um, up to date, so you have that foundation on which to do your planning and strategizing for long range planning. And I'm I'm a big stickler for that. This this is this has been great, Alma. Um, you know, my thesis for the year is is the building is the the building is the database. Mm -hmm. right? The building is a database and and data is the new oil, right? So uh, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your 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 subject matter expertise, um, your thought leadership and your leadership as a trustee and and kind of being the Sherpa and and walking uh, your your church and, and church members and church family through this process um, and and being consistent. Um, you know, because we, we had that crab cake a couple of years ago. And uh, we're due for another one. And we are due for another one. <laughs> <laughs>
and and look look where we are now. You know, you 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 had the the ASHRAE two level audit. Um, you know, we're we're working on on some grants to be able to get everything financed. So so this has been awesome. I, I could talk to you all day uh, about this. Um, so if anybody wants to reach out, how how do they contact you? You can contact me by uh, email or phone call. Um, my number is 301-785-4869. And my email is alma dot wiggins at mtcbc.org i'll do it again alma a l m a dot wiggins w i g g i n s at mtcbc.org that's great alma we'll leave it there Thank you so much. And we'll be in touch. We'll schedule that crab cake. Uh, yes, I look forward to it. <laughs> All right. Have a great weekend, Alma. Thank you so much. Thank you.